So, you just shot something on your shooting board and you come to find out, oh, it's, uh, it's not square. Isn't that what a shooting board is supposed to do? Well, let's fix that today. First off, there are two different ways that you can square up the end of the board. Number one, you can go at 90 degrees to the edge, and you can go at 90 degrees to the face. And each one of them is going to require slightly different things. First off, let me actually start with 90 degrees to the face. This is the one that's actually a little easier, but the one that's a little more tricky when people really think about it. So first off, today I've got two different shooting boards. This is the one that I most recently made, and it is amazing. The most high-tech, highfalutin, fun thing in the world. Uh, this shooting board will do it all, but it also has an adjustable fence. This one, however, does not have an adjustable fence. So we're going to be working on fixing both of them. When we're looking at 90 degrees to the face of the wood, let's put that down on here and come to find out that is the plane tilting this way that causes a problem. So number one, I want to make sure that the plane track is parallel to the main track. If you've got an engineered one like this, you're pretty sure it is. But if it's a homemade one like this, it might move over time. One of the easy ways to check that is grab a scrap piece of wood, drill a hole in it that fits the dowel, and unfortunately this one doesn't fit the dowel, and you can slide the dowel in and fit a spot there, and then move it a little bit, making sure that the whole surface is referencing the face, and as it does, the dowel will move up and down to fit different spots, and so you can see, oh yeah, there, here's a high spot, and here's a low spot, and you can hit your camera as you move the board around. Then to fix it, I could come in with a router plane, but with a router plane, there's a good chance of tipping one way or the other. My preferred way is just to find out where those high spots are with a measuring stick and then come in with a shoulder plane and just skim off those high spots. A lot of times you might just realize that you just got a little junk that came down in here. Some sawdust was impacting in this, some wax got in there, and then it's building up a surface, and that may cause the plane to tilt. But in all honesty, the plane tilting is pretty rare, and there's an even easier way to fix it than that. So I hope you're on this one. We've got this thing on the back called a lateral adjuster, and this will adjust the iron in and out, which basically tips the iron against the board or away from the board. So you can adjust how square this surface is by merely adjusting the lateral adjuster on the back. And honestly, that's the way I'm going to do it. If there's a problem with the track, I, I probably saw it, and I'm going to adjust that. But 90% of the time, it's the lateral adjuster. And that's why it really doesn't matter that the sole of the plane is square to the side. And even with this, an engineered shooting board plane, if I put this on here, I'm not actually 100% square. There's an ever so slight wobble one side to the other, maybe a degree or a half off from one side to the other. That doesn't matter at all. This side does not need to be square to this side. It all comes down to the lateral adjuster. There is no benefit to making this square to the other side as long as it's close, because you have a lateral adjuster to get you exactly what you want, to get you that 90 degrees. So next time you're running into issues, shoot the board, then pull it out, and see if it's square. If it's not, in this case, I'm out a little bit leaning out. I want to push it in a little ways. So to push it in a little ways, I'm actually going to push the lever down just a little bit. Not much. Let's try it again. Check that. And that one's dead on. We have nice and square that way. So next time you're restoring a plane and someone says you need to make sure that the sole is 90 degrees to the sides, you can look at them and go, uh, why is that? And they will tell you because you might need it for a shooting board. And you can say, then, What's that lateral adjuster for? Because in all honesty, there is absolutely no reason that these two need to be dead square. Yeah, square is nice, looks good, feels good, and it should be pretty close to it, but there's no reason that the two need to be absolutely perfect. You've got a lateral adjuster, use it. So next, let's look at how do you fix out of square with the edge, and in this case, I am ever so slightly out of square. With this one, it's really, really easy. I can just loosen this up, or in this case, I'm just gonna tap it, and lock it down. And then I can reshoot and check again. And then I can see if I am out of square. This thick white oak is going to drive me bonkers. And just like that, I brought it back into square. Having an adjustable fence makes things so much nicer. Um, they generally don't move. I actually had to tweak it out of square to show this being out of square. But just being able to adjust it a little bit, or even put it at a very different angle, allows me to do a lot of other things, which I've been able to use for several projects here. But then we come to this monster, and this one does not have an adjustable fence. I can't just easily tweak it. 
And that's what really throws a lot of people away from this. But in all honesty, I really like having a solid fence. If I'm just doing 90 degrees, this is nice. It is dead on, it doesn't move. I've had this now for over five years and it stays really, really close. But right now I actually have a little bit of a bump right here where the wood has swolled out, swollen out just a little bit right here. And the way you can find that out is you take your square, don't square it to the side and put it on there because if there's any variance on this lip, you're going to have problems. Put your plane in here, put the iron just inside so it's not sticking out, and then with your plane up against that, now you can put this on here and check your plane to your surface and make sure that those are 90 degrees. And these are really, really close, except for I have a little bit of a bump right in here. So to fix that, I'm gonna grab my shoulder plane, and I'm just gonna hit that high spot. So this sounds just like what I did before, except for I need to go the other direction because I'm going against the grain. And I'm just going to trim off this little bump that I have sticking out. A lot of times you'll just have dust and junk that builds up and it can be very, very easy to come in here and just clean out that high spot. It would be a little nicer to have a wider shoulder plane that would do the whole thing, but I can do it in just a couple passes running all the way across, making sure I hit just that high spot there. And now we can check it again. So let's bring the plane back in here, slide it in, put the square up against the plane and the fence. Yeah, hey, okay, that's what I like to see. We're nice right on there. I bring it up a little higher. And we're where we need to be there. Yeah, there, I still got a little bit of bubble. I didn't do it quite up high enough. It's just one more pass and we should be good on that. And with one more pass, we got a nice tight line running all the way across there. Making sure it's 90 degrees to the plane, not 90, against, 90 degrees to the slot. Again, we wanna make sure it's 90 degrees to the plane not 90 degrees to the slot. And now we know when we shoot a board on here, it's gonna be dead on. But you can always check it just at first to make sure. Shooting boards are one of those things that you don't really need them. You can do it freehand. And for a long time, I really liked doing it freehand, especially with one like this. It works really well with a low angle jack. It's okay. But once I got this one with all the bells and whistles on an actual shooting board plane, I use this thing all the time now. This is what I pull out whenever I need to shoot something rather than doing it freehand. It's long enough, it's big enough, it is smooth enough, it is fast enough, it's accurate enough, it's adjustable enough. This saves time and I found this to be very enjoyable, more enjoyable than doing it freehand. And so I have found myself doing far more shooting having something like this. If you'd like to see it, I have several videos on making this as well as the one I'm making this and I've got a pile of shooting board videos. Rex Kruger also has several really good videos. We did a collaboration a while ago and there's a lot of different ways to do it. If you find one that really works for you, you get it tuned in just right and it is amazing what they can do. They are so much fun and very, very useful. So I hope you like this little bit of adjustment on shooting planes. I hope that answered a few questions for you. This is one of those things, once you get it nailed down, they become so much fun to use and can be a huge benefit to the shop. So I'd love to hear your ideas. What do you do differently? If there's something that I missed that I should have covered, uh, please let me know that down below. I do read through all the comments and I answer as many as I can. So thank you for all the like, comment, share, subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Speaking of helping out the channel, everyone who's scrolling over here on the side, they are patrons on Patreon and they are the ones quite literally keeping the lights on in the shop and keeping us going. Also, I wanna say a huge thank you to all of the members on YouTube, people who've clicked that little join button. Uh, without members and Patreon, this channel wouldn't exist. So thank you. If you'd like to find out more about that, there's a link to Patreon down below, or you can click the little join button and become a member here on YouTube. We have special extras for both, and I think that'll do it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Oh, shoot, Ingboard. Take your best shot, Ingboard.